time for the ultimate new versus old iPhone challenge. Three years difference in age and a big difference in price. We want to find out if it's worth paying the extra for the latest model. Or if you're better off saving a few quid by buying an older one. All right, then. Let's see what you got. I've got this. The iPhone 12 mini, which is the cheapest of Apple's new range of phones. Nice, but a bit small. Yeah, well, it might only have a 5.4-inch screen, but it comes packed with lots of spec. I mean, it's got 5G, MagSafe wireless charging, and it's got Apple's new processor, the A14 Bionic processor for extra grunts. All right. How much? Comes in at 699 quid. It's cheap for a brand new iPhone, but I think I can do better. Come on, then, what you got? Fresh from the second hand market, I have Apple's 2017 flagship iPhone X. Like yours, it has Face ID. Like yours, it has two cameras on the rear. Like yours, it records video at 4K resolution. OK, then, come on. How much? 400 quid. So, my new iPhone 12 mini is nearly double the price of Otis's iPhone X. And by buying second-hand, not only do you save a packet, but get competitive specs too. But how do they stack up in the real world? Oh, wait a minute. Text. Welcome to Birmingham, a city known for its architecture and culture. As a tribute to Birmingham's contribution to the art world, head to the Iron House Art Gallery. Like many of Apple's products, the iPhone is known for its high design qualities. So let's critique away at the aesthetics and build quality. I think we can both agree that the phones are very similar. Yes, they are similar. The 10 was the first phone to do away with a physical home button. How did you get on with that? It, it took some getting used to. I didn't like it at first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with it now. Both got glass backs. Yes. Although mine's got a ceramic hardened screen, which makes it four times stronger than any other smartphone on the market. I've got a more curved presentation on mine, which I think makes it feel nicer in the hand. I quite like the straight lines. It kind of harks back. It's kind of retro to the iPhone 5. So which do you prefer then? Well. I prefer the hard straight sides. I think I'd have to agree with you on that one. Mm. So, when it comes to design and aesthetics, we both think Apple's return to retro styling puts the iPhone 12 mini on top. The producer has been in touch with the next task. OK. It's a race against time for your next challenge. Push each of your iPhone's processors and memory to the absolute max by getting it to complete a power-hungry task. To see whether the faster processor clock speed of the iPhone 12 mini has a real-world advantage over the iPhone 10s, we'd been asked to shoot a two-minute 4K video around this historic watch shop in Birmingham's famous jewellery quarter. And once our high-def videos had been shot, we had to edit them together and export them, something that will really push our phone's processors. The first phone to export them wins. In three, two, one... Go. Go. We're surrounded by clocks, but Otis decides to time our challenge on another phone. My 12 Mini has got the all-new Bionic A14 processor, which Apple claim is over 25% faster. My iPhone X's Bionic A11 was top of the line, but that was three years ago. Plus, it has one gig of memory less than Craig's Mini, so technically, his iPhone should walk it. Both are neck and neck in the early stages. But incredibly, my iPhone X starts to pull away. Wow! Have that, Charles. A three-second victory for my second-hand three-year-old iPhone X. Result. But to be fair, mate, three seconds is not going to change my user experience. There's a £300 difference between the phones, so... That's going to affect my user experience. <laughs> That's going to affect your life experience. <laughs> <laughs> On last stop of your trip, head to one of Birmingham's most colourful spots, Digbeth where Instagrammers travel from miles around to capture the street art. Each of you takes some photos of the same subjects to push those sensors to the max. Now, this is where I know my iPhone 12 mini is going to shine. It's got two 12-megapixel cameras, one with a wide angle and one with an extra wide angle. OK. Fancy, but not that fancy, because you see, my iPhone 10 also has two 12 megapixel cameras. The only difference is I've got one wide and one telephoto. Well, come on then, let's get snapping. All right. 
<laughs> Ever taken a shot and it's been bleached out by too much light or there isn't enough light in the shot so it's too dark? Yeah. HDR or high dynamic range takes care of that by taking lots of shots and combining them so you get enough light in your dark areas and not too much light in your uh, brighter areas, yeah. right? So let's have a go. While my iPhone 10 camera comes packed with HDR, Craig's iPhone 12 mini has Apple's all-new Smart HDR, which uses AI to give extra detail in very bright and very dark places in a photo. That's what I've got, but yours, the darker area, looks much more well-lit, doesn't it? it? Your bright area is too bright. I think you're right. Yeah. I'd have been happy with mine until I saw yours. That's better. Aye. It's the 12 mini, mate. Yeah, all right. One more test. OK. Let's go. Digbeth is famous for its graffiti, and some of the pieces of artwork are mahoosive, like this six-metre-tall robot. I want to see how close you have to be, or how far away you have to be, to get uh, this into the full picture oh, of the robot. OK, yeah. All right. Yep. Unlike the iPhone 10, the Mini has an ultra-wide lens, allowing me to fit more of what I want into the frame of my picture from a closer distance. Perfect for tighter spaces. Otis, on the other hand, has to stand much further back. You see, I'm taking a photograph of something that's six metres tall, and I'm just a social distance away, <laughs> whereas you... What, well, I'm extra safe? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to various upgrades in the iPhone 12's Mini's camera, the user experience and quality of photos are a cut above Otis's 10. So, after a day of putting our iPhones through their paces, do you really need to buy a brand new iPhone to get quality real-world results? OK, well, I've got to concede, Otis, that my phone costs 300 quid more than yours and there was very little difference in performance. And that's what makes it increasingly difficult to justify the cost of a brand new phone. Now, one of the reasons I upgrade, though, is my battery becomes completely shot through. I'd be a bit nervous about getting a second-hand phone in case the battery wasn't good enough. And that's fair enough, but there are lots of um, second-hand sellers who will refurbish and recondition the phone. Mm, yes, I bought used iPhones myself, and I'd be very pleased with them. They've uh, both come with uh, new batteries. And they come with warranties, remember? 